How Earth's Devastating Supervolcanoes Erupt. This is by The Conversation, Professor in Earth Sciences, University of Cambridge, by Simon Redfern. Devastating supervolcanoes can erupt simply due to changes that happen in their giant magma chambers as they slowly cool. According to a new study, this finding marks the first time researchers have been able to explain the mechanism behind the eruptions of the largest volcanoes on Earth. Geologists have identified the roots of a number of ancient and possible future supervolcanoes across the globe. No supervolcano has yet exploded in our human history, but the rock record demonstrates how devastating any eruption would be today's civilization. Perhaps most famous is the Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming, which has erupted three times in the past two million years. The last eruption occurred about 600,000 years ago, but there was a smaller one just 70,000 years ago. These giant volcano, volcanic time bombs seem to explode once every few hundred thousand years, and when they do, they throw huge volumes of ash into the sky. At Yellowstone, for example, the eruption that happened two million years ago ejected more than 2,000 cubic kilometers of material, enough to cover greater London in a mile-thick layer of ash. It's estimated that a super eruption like that would drive a global temperature drop of 6 degrees Celsius for more than 10 years. Such a dramatic change in global climate is difficult to comprehend. Aside from the instant local devastation, there would be global impacts such as crop failures followed by large famines. Despite their potential threat, comparable to a large asteroid impact, the mechanisms and origins of super eruptions have remained obscure. Modestly sized volcanoes operate on different time scales and magnitudes, and their eruptions appear to be triggered by pulses of molten rock or magma, which increase the pressure in the underground magma chambers that feed their vents. Two papers recently published in the journal Nature Geoscience tried to solve the mystery of how supervolcanoes are formed and how they erupt. Using experiments and computer modeling, scientists have discovered what drives a super eruption. They find that over time, the underground magma becomes increasingly more buoyant. Now we're talking about a supervolcano as opposed to a regular volcano. With time, the magma becomes increasingly more buoyant and eventually becomes a bit like a beach ball held down beneath the waves. When it's released, it shoots into the air, forced up by the dense water around it. In the first paper, a team led by Wim Malfate and Carmen Sanchez Valley of ETH Zurich used a synchrotron, which is an accelerator that can generate intense X-rays, to measure the density, temperature, and pressure of molten rock held in conditions resembling those of a magma chamber several kilometers below the surface. This required them to mimic deep earth conditions in the lab at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, holding samples at temperatures up to 1,700 degrees Celsius and the pressure of 36,000 atmospheres. To feed a volcano, you need a huge chamber, a magma chamber. The, Zin the Zurich team's results show that the magma chamber, as it cools, it begins to solidify and crystals grow in it that are denser than the magma. So as these fall to the base of the chamber, the remaining molten rock gets progressively less dense. If there is enough of it, their measurements indicate that the magma eventually becomes light enough that it can force its way through more than 10 kilometers of Earth's overlying crust. Co-authors Carmen Sanchez Valle, also at ETH Zurich, said, quote, Our research has shown that the pressure is actually large enough for the Earth's crust to break. As it rises to the surface, the magma will expand violently, which is a well-known origin of a volcanic ex explosion, eruption, end quote. The second paper, led by Lusa Carici, the and colleagues of the University of Bristol, 
describes computer simulations of the same processes, finding that the buoyancy of melt in natural magma chambers is also key to these huge events. This contrasts with the way that more familiar smaller uh, volcanoes erupt. There, blasts flow directly from rapid injections of magma, or from external vents that release the pressure on it, such as earthquakes or even the melting of overlying glaciers, as seen in Iceland recently. The results indicate that supervolcanoes just require a steady accumulation of molten rock that remains hot enough that it does not completely solidify. A massive eruption is then simply a matter of time. Thus, the eruption of massive supervolcanoes seem to be an inevitable part of their life cycle. Just as a sufficiently large star will necessarily generate a supernova, so a huge magma chamber should eventually become a massive eruption. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.